I want to know how many of you don't support human rights, equality for all, inclusive education, social cohesion, freedom of religion, and also freedom from religion. Is anyone going to say no, 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 or can I take it that that's all uh, fairly non-contentious? Because that's really what secularism is trying to protect. We really want uh, a society where freedom, fairness, and human rights are protected. Do we have one? Well, Britain is a very secular society in one sense. Uh, we're, in, in world terms, probably one of the least religious countries in the world. We're, obvious, we're also, paradoxically, one of the religious, most, most religiously diverse countries in the world. Um, and yet, how secular are we in our laws and our institutions? Now, I don't think we're that uh, secular in that respect. There's a huge difference. So I'm going to ask some questions, just a few. Which parliament is the only one in the Western world where clerics have the right to sit? Anybody, any ideas? Exactly. The only one in the Western world. How many clerics? Well done, well done. I'm, I'm surprised, but I'm delighted. Yeah, right. And that's a lot. And they do get a lot of influence, and they're rubbing shoulders with ministers and recalling them, requiring them to re answer and everything. So it's not just uh, pretty frocks. And actually, they're not that pretty anyway. Mind you, we are going to have some women shortly. Uh, so now, what about the only countries, and there are two of them, the only countries in the world that by law are required to have daily acts of worship in every maintained school in the Western world. Definitely not the US because that through, that's constitutionally secular, it's under a lot of pressure, but not the US. Another one? Ireland. UK. UK, right, well nearly right. It isn't Ireland. Um, it's actually England and Wales are the only countries in the world, in, in the Western world certainly, uh, where that is mandatory. And if you say a largely Christian act of worship, then it's anywhere in the world. So that's something that's sort of kind of hardwired into our constitution, largely, I think, partly because we've got uh, those clerics in the, in the Lords who uh, have a heart attack every time we try and suggest the, that that um, uh, mandatory uh, worship is withdrawn. I mean, they have palpitations and go and run to the minister and say, don't let them do it. <clears throat> and sadly, the ministers uh, conform because they don't want to upset the church. So, uh, we all, that's the kind of institutional issues. Um, can you think of anyone in this country um, who would lose their job if they became a Roman Catholic? No, yes, exactly right, the Queen, uh, because this is, you know, we have equality laws, but actually she's the only one who could lose her job, wouldn't be appointed, the, the head of state, if they were Catholic, and I think that's absolutely disgraceful, um, but it's still there, and uh, the, the, the government's frightened to change it, whether it's left or right, it doesn't make any difference, they just won't touch that. Um, although they've slightly improved it with some of the, uh, some of the people further down the, 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 uh, the pecking order. Um, so, uh, we talk about animals. What about, uh, we've got animal welfare regulations, including about slaughter. What is the basis for any exemption? You can't think why there should be any exemption to that, should there? Are there any exemptions to that and what are they? Religious, yes, religious for halal and kosher slaughter. And I don't think the animals deserve to be uh, inhumanely killed um, unnecessarily because of other people's religious beliefs. But I'm afraid that's what's happening. We've been fighting that hard for a long time. Uh, the government's frightened to do it because of religious interests, but at least what we are, and I think we're going to succeed in, and we're working in Brussels on this in Brussels as well, 
is for there to be labelling so that we all know what, uh, w when we're eating something, whether or not it has been from, it is from food that has been slaughtered without the animal being stunned in advance. The place perhaps though where there's the greatest uh, implication, adverse implication of, to the person in the street for the absence of secularism is in education. Um, and we have people phoning us up almost in tears saying, no, um, I'm a non-believer, I've just had my child come back from school, they've been asked to worship three times during the day, um, even in a community school sometimes, um, and they've been set homework, what does God think about this, and, and, and all sorts of uh, uh, proselytizing kind of uh, activities in the school. Um, the, the classic answer to that is, oh, well, you can take the kid, your child out of, uh, of, uh, of school for that. That's a cruel thing to do to a young child. Um, and, and we maintain that uh, schools um, should not be able to proselytize. Uh, and indeed, uh, perhaps another question, do you know how many schools uh, are religious schools? What proportion of the schools are religious? Any suggestion? <laughs> not, not quite that bad. A third, a third, that's absolutely right. Um, and what percentage of the running costs of the school, of those schools, does the state pay for? Two thirds. The lot, every penny, I think it's disgraceful, I mean, every penny is paid for by the state. Um, even of schools where uh, they'll only teach one religion, um, and uh, they're, they're, they, it's not just uh, the worship, the, the religious education is regarded to be cross-curricular. They can do it in any subject. So the idea of withdrawal, which every, uh, there's a statutory right of withdrawal, it's hardly operable in practice because religious education should, uh, can, can take place in any, uh, any subject at all. So, uh, for example, you know, if it, if it takes um, 12 apostles, 15 days, yes, never mind. So, in the arithmetic. So, um, I think the biggest problem um, with schools um, is the extent to which uh, parents who themselves, at, 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 say, the 30 or 40 years old, are probably the least religious people in the country. I mean, how many people, what, what percentage of the... Of the of, of that age group, do you think go to church on an average Sunday? Two or three, actually. Um, so you have this amazing mix, uh, mismatch between the views of the parents and indeed the children, if anything, are less religious still. I mean, who, how many, uh, how many uh, Sunday schools do you think there are? I have to say that of the whole country, that this part of the world, extraordinarily, partly to do with immigration, is perhaps the place where there's the most. But if you take the country as a whole, I mean, Sunday schools have virtually disappeared. Um, and, and children just aren't, by and large, interested in, in, in going to school, in, in going to church. And I, I'm not, this is not an anti-religious rant, it's just a statement of fact. I mean, I'm, I'm all for freedom of religion. But you have this amazing mix, mismatch between what the children, the, the pupils, and their parents, uh, who are the people who are entitled to say what they want from education, have, uh, want, and, and what is being provided by the, by the system. And, and the practical implications of that are, that paradoxically, uh, on the one hand, often parents can't get their, school, their children into the school next door because it's a religious school and they're not prepared to say um, that they believe in or are communicants of that particular church. I think that's absolutely disgraceful for this 100% uh, 100 funded, uh, uh, publicly funded institution. So, so there is institutional discrimination against people for this publicly funded service. Um, uh, and also, um, we find so uh, uh, some, it's both that they sometimes can't get into the local school, um, and they want to get into it because, as, as I say, they're, they're not signing up. Um, 
or, or sometimes they're actually, in a sense, forced to go to a religious school because that's the only one that's available in, 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 in the locality, particularly out in, in, in the country, um, where sometimes it's 20 miles to the nearest community school. And we had an extraordinary situation the other day where pupils were being allocated by the local authority to a Sikh school. This is in Stoke Poges in Buckinghamshire. Uh, and these, these parents weren't Sikh. Um, some were Christian, some were non-believers. And they played absolute hell about that. And I can understand culturally, it's not a racist or any other kind of uh, problem. It's just saying, we, we want a neutral school. We don't want our children to be kind of force-fed with any religion or culture that we're not fair of, and that they have a legal right to that, a human right to that. So these educational problems uh, go further to, to beyond the pupils and them being effectively forced to worship. Um, and and uh, we have uh, quite a well-established network of uh, proselytizing agencies that come into school and, uh, and, uh, and, and give sort of very hard uh, religious education, very proselytizing. They've, we even came across one recently where they, I think it was the, 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 uh, the Gideon saying and holding up the Bible, this is the most important book you'll ever see, much more important than any of your other school books. Well, sorry, we think that science and mathematics and, uh, and all the other subjects are actually quite important too, but not as far as the Gideons are concerned. And there's more and more pressure uh, of these organizations coming in a very organized way into schools that are often under-resourced and quite happy to uh, subcontract their, um, their worship and their RE to, to uh, uh, people coming in uh, with that kind of agenda. And I think that's an abuse of, of the pupils that we ought to, uh, to stop. Similarly, um, there's a lot of discrimination uh, against teachers. And we've been to the European uh, Parliament and tried to fight hard on that European Commission, uh, and obviously in Westminster as well, because uh, as you've got uh, these third of the schools that are religious, if you're a teacher um, and you don't happen to be religious, your ability to get into these religious schools um, is very much, uh, uh, you're a second class citizen. In fact, you very often, some of them, you actually can't get into unless you sign up to say, I'm a, um, I'm a uh, communicant Anglican and I intend in my private life and, and just to do exactly what it says in, 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 in the church's teaching. So if you happen to be gay or, or, um, or living uh, in, in uh, a, a relationship with someone and you're not married, and particularly if you have a child, um, you probably get sacked. And, and this is publicly funded school. Uh, and I think that's absolutely disgraceful. So if some of those things have uh, engaged you as being unfair, I'll just tell you just a few things in the two minutes left of what the NSS does, the National Secular Society does, and maybe if you're interested, you could pick up some of these leaflets uh, and come and join us to add your uh, weight to that fight. So we're protecting equality for all under one secular legal system. We want to separate the Church of England from the British state. We want to reform the House of Lords so that unelected bishops cannot sit in Parliament by right. Promote a broad and balanced secular education system for, si for children without religious bias or discrimination. End state funding for religious schools. Protect vulnerable women and minorities living in orthodox conservative religious communities. We do quite a bit of work on Sharia law, which isn't law. Uh, and end all relig religious privileges in law, health care, education, finance and politics. Thank you very much indeed for listening.